All right, so I said um, we're going to talk. It looks like I was just looking at the slides. looks like we have three very closely related slides. So I'm going to kind of talk about the next three slides. Um, we'll work through them, but in, in uh, you know, be, I'll be making reference to them in, in terms of this ecology. So what is ecology? So if we think about the world we live in, um, we had said we've got the population of people, right? And then we've got the population of deer. Oh, and then we got the population of turkeys and the populations of stink bugs and the populations of flies and the populations of this, that, and the other. So, so we have all of these populations, but they don't live in isolation, right? I mean, you interact with with all of these, uh, all species interact with each other. So, so when we talk about ecology, part of it is all of the species living in one area and interacting together along with their interactions and the effect of the area. So it's the effect of the land, the effect of the different populations. Everything is interconnected. It's this interconnectedness of our world. That is what the study of ecology is all about. So when we look, um, we say we have systems. So the first of those three slides um, is, um, it says it's systems and we have a a weird picture. So we're right here, um, and it says systems, and we go on to say that a network of interdependent components and processes. So ecology, when we talk about all this stuff out there, the COVID virus, the flu virus, um, strep throat, um, parasites, uh, everything out there, ticks, you know, I mean, you can, anything that we interact with, um, plus our homes, our, the, the land, the, how hot it is, how cold it is, all of that is part of this system. We said a system is a network of interdependent components and processes. And, and when we talk about the biosphere, our world and everything in it, um, this is the system that makes up ecology, the field of ecology. So, so an ecosystem is a, we take, we kind of, we step back from the whole world and we'd said, well, the, the Cranberry Township ecosystem, what does it consist of? All of the countless animals, plants, and their environment um, through which matter and energy flows. So matter, I'm sorry, and I, I, I don't like through which, through, within which, I'm going to rewrite this. So make sure here at the second bullet on on systems, I don't like the way I said part of that. I'm going to re-say it so it says, ecosystems might consist of, will and do consist of countless animals, plants, and their environment through which matter cycles within, that's the part I'm changing here, matter cycles and through which energy flows. So all of, you may have heard this, um, all of the water that exists on Earth has existed on Earth for as long as Earth has been here. It doesn't come and go. It doesn't come from outer space and go to outer space. It's here. All of the carbon that I'm made of, all of the carbon you're made of, all of the carbon that's in the ground as, as fossil fuel, all of the carbon that's in the atmosphere as CO2, it is, we have a set amount that is, that is here and has been here and will always be here because what does it do? It cycles within the ecosystem. Now, energy, on the other hand, where does our energy come from? You say a candy bar. No, no, no. I mean, yes, it does, but that isn't where it started from. 
you know, it doesn't start with the food. It, it, it comes from up there. Look, up there in the sky. That's right, the sun. The ultimate source of energy in our ecosystem, in our biosphere, is sunlight. And, and, and plants have this remarkable ability of capturing sunlight and, and using it to build large carbon-containing molecules which make up you and I. And so, so we have this carbon that is cycling and energy that is being coming in, being used, and some of it is and it's being lost as heat energy back into the atmosphere. So it flows through. Energy flows through, through the biosphere, through an ecosystem, whereas matter cycles within. Okay. All right, so when we talk about that cycling of that matter, I had said, we have carbon in the atmosphere, carbon dioxide. We have carbon in the living animals. We have carbon in those plants out there, and we have carbon hidden away in the ground as fossil fuel. And so, so we have state variables. So what are these state variables? Those places, those locations where, if we talk about carbon, so when we talk about carbon as a, an example, we said the state variables for carbon are the atmosphere, all of the life, and then in fossil fuel, um, and then in, um, when we talk about, uh, in, so that would be rocks too, right? So there is carbon, um, carbon in, um, um, in limestone even, calcium carbonate. So we have all of these different locations where, where the, whatever you're talking about is found, and that is what we call a state variable, also known as a reservoir. Now, with the, the carbon that I said was cycling, we had said, I eat a plant, it goes from that state variable into me, and then I use that energy to um, the energy in that plant to wiggle around to do stuff, and some of that energy become some of that carbon becomes me. Some of it is used as energy, and what do you think happens to it? This is one of those things that people don't think about. But every child knows the answer to this. What do you breathe in? If I say, if I was to go and ask your little brother or sister, sister, you know, six-year-old, I'd say, you know, why do you breathe? What do you breathe in? And they'd say, I breathe in oxygen. And I'd say, okay, what do you exhale? Carbon dioxide. They all know that. You know that. Where is that carbon coming from? The carbon is the waste product of releasing energy in these, in the molecules of the food that I ate. And so that carbon goes back out into the atmosphere. Your, your little brother or sister knows that, right? So do you. So what does a plant do? Well, a plant uses the sunlight energy to take carbon from the atmosphere and build plant sugars things like that, that we love to eat, right? And so, so then, so, so what we can talk about is flows, the flows of matter. So the flows, so what I was just talking about, carbon going from out there into a plant, into me, and then back out there, right? That is a flow, um, so, so the third slide in this series of three slides that I said I was going to talk about is where we are looking at this weird kind of ugly picture. If you look carefully at it, you say, oh, you have a sun. You have some beautiful flowers that the rabbit has eaten. And oh yeah, the, the rabbit got eaten by the lynx. And so that's, that's kind of like um, what I was talking about, the cycling but then, 
you say, what is going on with that fourth picture over there? You might think the lynx is sleeping, but he doesn't really look like he's asleep. And that's not what they're representing. He's died. The lynx passed away. And so what happens to him now? He decomposes. But that doesn't just happen automatically. There's decomposers. There's flies. There's um, microbial organisms, both bacterial and fungal, that are going to break that thing down. And some of the nutrients are going to go in the soil. But the carbon, it's just like they exhale the same thing that you and I do. They exhale that CO2. So the carbon goes into the atmosphere. So so we have these locations, these reservoirs, these state variables, which are where different things, and, and I could have been talking about water. So if we said water, we could say, uh, well, water is in the atmosphere. We know that. It falls on the ground as rain, right? We said, oh, it might be in that puddle over there. It might be in that stream. It might be in that river. These are, these are state variables. It might be percolate into the ground, right? And be in the aquifer underground. It might be in ice. And it's moving. It's flowing. So we, we can use many different examples to talk about state variables and flows between them. Okay. Stop right here and we'll be right back. <laughs> 